Hi, you got the Blind Guy YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about this Atlas saw from Harbor Freight. Got some important details we want to tell you. And some things that we bought. And some things we already had. First of all, here's your Atlas saw. It's the 40 bolt, 10 inch. And there's a good look at it. You got your battery pack down on the end. And you got uh, this one middle section here you can take out. You just unscrew this from the orange and line up the arrows and take it right apart. The thing is, I want to show you, first of all, I had someone ask about a chain. And there's 39 cutting teeth on this chain here. And it says that in your manual that is the number, the key number is like le certain letters. And then it says 39. So that's how you tell what kind of chain you need and I purchased this uh, off of Amazon and I put the link for this in the other video I did about the Atlas saw but it's an S39 3 profile uh, 0.05 inch and it also shows ten, uh, that's, your, that's your tooth size by the way and then over here is your 10 inch that's your bar size. And then your 39 is your tooth style. And I verified it before I took and took this chain off and verified by pictures on the internet on Amazon that that's what this is. So I got this on Amazon. I think it was less than $15 made by Oregon. Seemed like it was $12 and some change. That's the first item we're going to talk about. Made in USA right there. So you can get these on Amazon, like I said. Um, the link is in the other video, and I want you to go back and watch that video and learn a little bit about the saw. The other thing that I didn't mention in the other video, that's one reason why I'm doing this one, is about the chain. The second thing is this right here. This is a mini grease gun. This is an Oregon brand. The link for it's in the other video and I may try to look these back up both of these both of these things here and see if we can't uh, put the link on this video but what you do with this there's a hole right here there's also a hole here but that's not where you put grease that's just a hole that goes all the way through there's a hole right here and you put your grease gun with this tip on it right there and then, of course, you uh, press in on the red part, and it collapses the end, and that's where it pumps the grease in. But I can't do that with uh, one hand, but you pump it in there. Uh, you might want to put this up against something hard, like a pile of wood or, a, or your building wall or something, and that'll hold it good and tight and press. And it will squirt grease out right up here at the top. And that's how you grease your chain. There is a little sprocket in here that turns with that, and that helps to keep the bar from wearing. There's also that same hole over here on the other side. And so there's one hole on this side, one hole on that side, identical place. Um, now what we want to talk about is cleaning this, and there's some very important parts in here that you don't want to lose. I almost lost mine and it helps with the oiling of the, of the saw. It's where the oil comes out. There's a little black piece of rubber in there that holds it and helps it to shoot out. I think there's actually two pieces of rubber in there that you do not want to lose, so stay tuned, and you'll see that. I'm going to turn this thing around. But before we turn it around, we're going to show you how to take this loose. You grab the orange piece, and you grab the black, and you just turn it. And uh, it shows you right there. There's actually a little picture of unlock. And there just shows you how to lock. But you just turn it like this right here. And back it off. And this is for those who do, haven't seen this before. And then there is a notch right here that lines up with your notch right there. And then you just pull it apart. Let's see if we can 
pull it apart. They are pretty hard to pull apart. They're pretty stout pieces of stuff. I mean, I can't get a good grip on it trying to film it over there at the same time. Okay, I got it. Basically, what you have to do, it's kind of hard to hold that in, but you got all that weight on the other end. But you take this and wiggle it up and down. But there's, you can see the arrows. i get the camera angle on it. There's your arrow pointing to that arrow. And you wiggle it up and down, twist, get somebody to help you sometimes if you have to, but it's a pretty tight fit. And then uh, once you get that apart, here's what it looks like. But there's where your electrical connection is made. Okay, we got that out of the way. Now, while the saw is together, what I want to do is blow all that sawdust out of there with the air hose before I take it apart. So we're going to do that. Okay, we got that blowed out. Uh, good thing we'd had, took it outside and didn't do it on camera because the air compressor come on and been uh, loud in your ears. But what we're going to do is we're going to take the supplied wrench that comes with it. And we're going to take this apart. And like I said, the reason why we're doing this is because there are some key components in here. And you just snug this up. And she should break right loose. There are some key components in here that you do not want to lose. I know I've said that probably three times, but I'm just trying to re reiterate where we're at. Take this nut off, and the nut stays with the plastic cover the way it's designed. And there you can see it stays in there. Here's the first piece you don't want to lose, this little black piece right here. Now, I did take an air hose and blow this out, and um, I think I might have lost that one, or it was the other one think there's another one back there but you can clean this I'm gonna demonstrate here uh, just be aware that that's what it is just hold your thumbnail on there and blow all that out and get it clean as you need to the other piece is behind that uh, it's behind this bar here and we're just going to raise up on it, not even loosen the chain, and we're going to take it out. And right here's where it is. Okay. Right here. You don't want to lose this. Uh, this is a piece I was clean, blowing some air on here and cleaning it out. And I blew this out, and it fell on the floor there in my shop or out there in the woodshed or whatever. You don't want to lose this piece, and you don't want to lose that because that's got to do with oiling. Same thing here. Just hold your thumb over that, and right here's where your oil comes out. Let me get my pointer. Right here is where your oil comes out. Right there. You don't want to get trash in that hole. Uh, normally what I'll do is after I take my cover off, then before I take the bar off, I'll blow that off there and get that sawdust out. As long as you're aware of the piece and you're somewhere where you're not going to lose it, that's the main thing. But don't shoot air up in this hole here. Um, you don't want to get debris in there. So we're going to do that and show you what, what I'm doing. Of course, I'm going to do it off camera because it's a hard time to hold everything and, and film it. But that's the basics, what you need to do. I don't, I don't know. That there, I think that's the only two pieces that's in there. And then of course, here's your adjustment screw where you adjust your chain uh, on the bar. And we'll show you that once we get all this cleaned up and I'm gonna clean this piece up here. Just hold your thumb over that and hold your finger over this hole here and blow the direction away from the hole like that. Don't blow it that way in case something does get done in there. You don't want it done in there. But like I said, I used to do it when I still had the bar laying on there. Because it uh, took one time, 
uh, blowing that out and it hit that piece of rubber and that piece of rubber went flying and I found it. It was either in the yard or out there in the shed where we were at. So we lucked up on that. So uh, don't lose the parts because you're not going to be able to find them at Harbor Freight. And I don't even know if you could find them on the internet through Atlas or not. So, okay, we got that clean. There it is. And I just don't want to blow all that air in your ears. And of course I can't hold that in the camera too, but just get it clean. And we're going to show you what it looks like in case you do let it flip out. As I said, that hole goes that direction. You don't have to get your saw perfectly spotless clean. I'm trying to get the camera. I'm having a hard time with this thing. Um, trying to get the camera to hold it still. There we go. Trying to look out for the leg down here. I'm trying to get a good shot. There we go. This, all right. Now, like I said, this does come out. Just like that. At least I think it does. Or it goes on down in there. But, yeah. There you can see. But, anyway... If it does flip up, just push it back down in there. The orange paint there is on this side, then the holes there. I don't know if that comes all the way out or not. That might not be the piece that flew out. I think it was this piece when I was blowing the cover off. Some air got under it. Yeah, it was this piece. See right there? Here you go. It was this piece that flew out. But there's how it orients in there. It only goes one way. And there's where some oil might get down in it or something. That's plastic. It looks like some kind of glue might have been in there that they peeled off. But if you got it in your hand, you see the, all these marks on it like that. They go down, just flip it over. This is the piece that I lost for a few moments. That one. This one here, this other piece in the saw, I don't think it actually comes out. It might be connected to a, might be connected to a small hose. Um, there's a speck of dirt down in there now. And I held my finger over that to keep stuff from getting it. It don't have to be perfectly spotless clean. Just once in a while, blow this area out and get it clean. And I lifted up that to see if there anything that worked in there. And I saw a couple specks of dirt, but I don't want to mess that up. But anyway, that's where the oil, that's where the oil comes through. All right, I have cut a lot of wood. I'm just talking to you while I wipe my hands off. I've cut a lot of wood with this saw. Um, cut a lot of wood with this saw. Um, I got this um, 12 foot dump truck. It's got these real high sides on it. 12 foot uh, long bed. I've cut four of those loads. And I've got other stuff around here that I didn't even put on there. So there's five, maybe six loads that I've cut with this thing. I sharpened it the first time the other day. Maybe the second time. I'm not going to lie to you. Maybe the second time I sharpened it. But I went ahead and bought me a chain in case this one breaks or it just gets to where it will not sharpen. And uh, there is a chain... Uh, file. Okay. What I was trying to look for was the file. It's up there. I got one down here, but what I was saying was the file size is 5 30 seconds. So you can get one of those up. Pick one of them up at your store. I've got two different setups. I've got this one here that fits the saw. Um, and you can buy one of these little kits here to put your file on it shows you how to file it um if you don't have that you can just get your file on a file handle like this and just be sure and keep it level and hit it back and forth uh, two or three times don't uh, don't get overzealous with it and really start filing it's just a little bit dull you need to just file it just a little bit and keep the angles that you have. 
and then you have teeth that run the other way. And of course, you want to look for your link where there's two on the same side. And that's how you can tell where you should start. That way you can keep track. Here's one. And here's one on the same side. And see, so, so you got one on this side, that side, this side, and so forth. So this side, that side, this side, this side. So I start where the teeth are even. That way I don't have to mark them where you got two on one side. And then I just file at the desired angle that they are on the chainsaw. And that's just a little tip for those who didn't know that. And then here's your other hole on the other side to put your grease fitting in. And by the way, this grease gun is an Oregon also, if I didn't say that. But uh, we're gonna put this thing back together and uh, show you that. Let's see if we can uh, tip this down here. It's easy to do on the table. It's a little bit harder to do when you're out in the field and you got this on here and you already need to tighten, you got your bar on, you need to tighten. The screw's always on the back side of the bar and it's always hard to get to, but we're gonna loosen this up just a little bit. And then you make sure your teeth are going the right way. And uh, as you can see, the teeth, the cut on this one is that direction because the chain goes that way. So pay attention when you take your chain off and then put this back in. Uh, might want to clean that a little bit. And the reason you want to clean this here is because you actually have a hole right there. And that's where some oil can circulate too, also, I believe. And then this is your adjustment hole right here that goes on the adjuster. You notice you have two. It says the bar wears later down the road. You can just flip it over and run it like that. And while we got it here, let me show you a little sprocket out here on the end. Just might as well take the chain completely off. It's falling off anyway. There's your sprocket that turns right there. And that's what that grease gun, grease fit, or grease, grease gun is what you use. But that's what that hole's for. And just hold the chain up, put it on there. Put everything back together. Put it back in place, put it on the uh, sprocket back here first before you drop it down. And see if I can see the, the tensioner. I backed it off some. And of course, it wasn't enough, I don't think. Maybe it was. Right there it is. But like I said, it's always on the back side. I'm gonna back it off just a hair more because it's not, it's not meeting up with the uh, other spot that it's supposed to. Let's see, I'm missing something. There it goes. There we go. Then we'll put your cover on. And I'm going to tighten this up just a little bit to get it to hold it with the screw down here. I'm going to snug it up. There we go. We'll put your cover back on. You probably have to tighten it up some more. But you want this on there before you tighten it up too tight. You just put too much tension on it. It may fall right off. And snug it up just like that. That way it won't fall down on the end. The end over here. That way it won't just fall down. Now, wipe some of this oil off my hands so I can pick this thing up and get a good look at it. All right, let's squeeze this. What you want, you can see your chain's too loose, and I just got this snug, so we're going to tighten it up some more. And the screw, like I said, is on the back side. Turn it uh, clockwise, about another turn it looks like. Yeah, 
and that's close. I actually want that a little bit tighter. Since I got this tight, I'm also going to turn it upside down. Um, and tighten the screw down right there. It's a little trick I learned the other day. I guess it works. Uh, someone told me, you know, you're cutting with your saw and you're putting the weight here on the bottom. You're pressing up on it all the time. See how it moves? Push up on the saw when you tighten that screw down there. And then push, keep it pushed up on it when you're tightening this. That way, as you're cutting, it won't move up. And then your chain won't get floppy. So that's basically what I'm doing when I flip this thing upside down. Um, it's not full of oil, so I'm not worried about it. Worried about it doing it. But we're going to tighten it up some more. I just cleaned this thing the other day. That's why it's so clean. But we're going to do that. And we're going to see how much chain. Tighten it up some more. And the chain is just about where you can slip a nickel under there. You know, and it's pushed up. Pushed up too. Also, and you just want like a nickel's worth under there. And then uh, go ahead and snug up your nut here. And uh, I had that thing pretty loose. It could have stood being a little bit tighter. But it's tight enough to hold it. Don't over tighten it, you know. Tighten it up like a little girl. And then pull your chain through. Make sure it's going. And there we go. All right. Let me wipe off my hands here. Uh, what you want to do is every time, let's put the camera around here. Every time you use your chainsaw, this pole saw, um, I said it in the previous video, one battery fully charged and it runs down to almost nothing you'll have just a little bit of oil left. So if you fill your tank here completely full, and I'll show you, flip mine around here. Um, there's a full line like right there. I fill mine all the way up to here to where I can see the oil because you don't want to run out of oil. If you fill this tank completely full, that is equal to one charge, fully charged battery. So every time you put a new battery in, Go ahead and fill your tank in, fill it up. New battery equals fill up the tank. Just like if you was running a gas powered chainsaw, you wanna put your gas in and your oil in all at the same time and keep them full uh, when you start. If you have a half a tank and you fill up the gas tank for some reason, fill up your oil tank. Same thing with these electric saws, do the same thing. Put more power on it, Fill it up fully all. Uh, I think that's all I want to say about this thing. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory there. Except for those key parts that you don't want to lose. So, I did this video, like I said, because I lost that one. I blew the air hose on it and it flipped out. The one that's in the cover. So, but we got that. Uh, this is the... Uh, People's like, how tall is this thing? Here's the battery pack down here, and here's one lamp already attached. You know, that right there is this end. Well, right there is probably about five foot, and it's it's sitting on the ground. So you got five foot right there, and you put this thing together. You got another section that's about that as long. Um, like I said, go back and watch my other video. Um, when you're, it, I think it's like, I won't say 15 feet maybe or whatever, but whenever you're cutting something and you're reaching up, you're already at five, most people have shoulder height is about five foot roughly. So you got, um, another five foot of working height there. So I think the working height's like 19 19 feet maybe something like that depending on how tall you are you got this uh saw right here in your hand and you got the other one up here so 
you can get 15 to 20 feet just standing on the ground with these three sections. And if you're doing a lot of work on the ground and you don't need that middle section, go ahead and take that middle section out. And that'll keep you <laughs> from having to overwork yourself. Uh, the other day I actually had this all together and was thought about taking that middle section out because there was a lot of limbs down low on this tree that had sprouted out. And all you have to do is just back further away from your work and saw the little stuff off closer to the ground and then take that saw and raise it up higher and there you can get the top stuff too but if you don't have anything that's real tall and you want to do and you everything's short close to the ground you want to trim take your middle section out and you can work it like it just as easy and uh, i start like i said i started to the other day but i had a tree a beech tree and it's got sprouts at the ground over my head and so it worked out pretty good but i did another another pile of brush the other day with that but um like i said this here wrench comes with your saw and it uh it don't come with the grease gun that's why i said you need it but i'll try to put that in this the links to those two items if i can go back and find them and share those links if not they'll be in the original video i did for the atlas pole saw so if you like this video give it a thumbs up and share these videos with your friends and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to smash it real hard and go ahead feel free to comment maybe there's something i left out uh, that's why i'm doing this video i left something out of the other one but we're going to post this one and we've got the next one i'm going to do is going to be some indoor lighting and some indoor things we're going to do two at one two at one time we're going to do those by the way, I'll give you a clue. What we're going to do is we had these big old lights similar to, like this in the house that just kept giving problems. And we replaced those with some really nice LEDs I found at Home Depot. So tune in to the next video, if you will. And as always, have a nice rest of your day. And you got the Blind Guy YouTube channel. And we're signing out with one last look at the Atlas Saw from Harbor Freight. And have a nice rest of your day.